I can tell you that the motor units are leading the procession right now. I also see some uh, motor units from the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Um, the area has been closed off the street. This is to, uh, to honor the man who gave his life for the community here. Um, I can also tell you that the, uh, you, you might be able to hear it, but up, up, up above, uh, also leading, is also leading the way is the uh, Tucson police helicopter that uh, has been following the procession from the medical examiner's office. Uh, people are putting their hand over their heart as the procession makes its way into Carrillo Mortuary. A very, very somber, a very sad day, but it, uh, it, 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 it fills my heart just to know that this community has come out and has come out the way they have to support the family and the police department. I was talking to a retired uh, motor officer for Tucson Police Department, and he was telling me that this was the hardest assignment he ever had to do was when they led a procession, especially when it was a fallen officer. He said that was the toughest thing that they ever had to do, but they do it because they still know that they have a job to do. Uh, again, Tucson police officers, Tucson police cars driving past the Police Department headquarters, all here to uh, pay their respects to Adam Buckner, who was just 31 years old and had been with the Tucson Police Department since 2021. Uh, again, I, I keep saying this because it, it, it's a sad day, but at the same time, um, it's a nice day, it's a bright sunny day, and, uh, and the, uh, the helicopter again is flying above us. And there's police car after police car. And we're gonna turn the camera around. Motor officers have already uh, gotten off their motorcycles and uh, are now going to probably uh, create a line uh, to bring the uh, to bring the body in. Um, there is two some police car after two some police car, and uh, there is the Pim County Sheriff's Department that's coming right right in front of us right now. That's also part of the procession. You know, and I should also point out that. Um, this is a very tight-knit community here, and they will not, they have 24-7 uh, coverage, so to speak. The Honor Guard, as well as other volunteers of the department, will stand guard over officers, over the officer's body until he's laid to rest. This is something that is done, that I've covered many, many times, sadly. But um, it, uh, this is their show of respect for the officer by protecting his body for 24-7. Again, the streets are blocked off and you can see why, because uh, we've got all these cars. I don't have a number yet and I asked um, how many officers, how many cars were involved. Um, I couldn't get a number for you, but I can tell you there are quite a few. I asked also about funeral arrangements and I was told uh, they have not come up with any quite yet. So maybe we'll uh, they'll know something a little later on this week, but as of right now, uh, there are no uh, funeral arrangements that have been made yet. That was something that uh, a lot of the our viewers were wanting to know when this funeral was gonna be, but we, we do not know as of right now. Um, but as soon as we find out, we'll certainly let you know about this. This is an immense show of support uh, for Officer Buckner. Um, I'm, it's quite touching, quite touching. Also, I talk.
Well, the Sheriff's Department and the Tucson Police Department work hand in hand, and especially under Chief Kazmar. Um, apparently, they have a very good working relationship, and whenever one department needs something, the other one is always there to help them out. Um, I know during the, when we were talking about the Sweet 16, uh, Sheriff's Department was on standby in case TPD needed them. So it's, it's a very good working relationship that they have. So uh, it's very strong, and, and at times like this, it, uh, this is, I guess this is a day you don't ever want to think about, but when it does come, it's good to know that the community as well as the other law enforcement agencies are here to help support the, uh, the agency who has a fallen officer. And again, he died in the line of duty. He was the ninth officer to do so. And it's covering these things, as I've covered many of them, don't get any easier. It's, it's always sad, and of course you always want to think about the, the, the parents, the wife, the children, the family, and the friends, because uh, Officer Buckner had made a lot of friends and was very well entrenched into this community. Um, I was talking to somebody else who was at the uh, Fraternal Order of Police meeting last night, and he said that uh, they all said a prayer for the family and for Officer Buckner. So even some of these retired officers who didn't know the man, it still affects them because he's a brother in blue. And also, you know, I have to tell you that my heart goes out to him, watching him um, struggle uh, through what he had to say at yesterday's news conference was um, was it, it was heartbreaking you know it, it really was because as he said this is one uh, one day this is one phone call that you don't ever want to receive as a police chief that one of your officers has died in the line of duty and uh, you're right he's relatively a new chief and he's had to deal with this but it uh, you know I was talking to my husband about it. My husband said, you know, that's, that's part of the job. You don't know if your loved one's going to come back when you, when you kiss him goodbye in the morning. You don't know that. And it's just part of the job. And it is. It is a part of the job. But when it happens, it just becomes even more challenging, more difficult to, to comprehend. Um, there are people who are living across the street from Garrio Mortuary that uh, have stopped by also to give their condolences. They're, they're, uh, they, they've been very, very nice about we, when we tell them what's going on, they immediately know that it's the officer who died in the line of duty and, and uh, are also paying their respects. We've got some other officers that are coming, that are coming this way. These are, uh, I think these are people that have just crossed the street from the uh, from, from TPD headquarters. <sighs> and uh, they're on their way again to line, to line up so when the body is taken from the uh, you know, the Hearst. It's, um, it's, you know, it, it's kind of like, I, I don't want to compare it to a police department, to a police officer, but yes, it's very sad, but we um, have a job to do as well, and we need to report the facts, and we need to report what's going on, and you have to do that. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you go and you do what you need to do to let your emotions out, but I mean, I, I have to tell you, that I, I'm seeing all these officers that I've known forever, and and. You know, it's it's heartbreaking to see them, and it's it's very very emotional. Absolutely.
Do we need to reposition? 